Welcome into Sports Memo's Betting Podcast, NFL, every game on the board with Teddy Covers. Teddy, welcome to the pod. How are you? Hey, great to be here, Drew. How are you today, buddy? I'm doing good, man. Excited to get your opinion on uh, this slate of games. We got up first, Teddy, New York Giants, Washington Redskins. We got the Redskins minus one and a half or minus two at home, 42 being the total here, Teddy. Well, which team are you excited about laying points with here? Oh, neither. <laughs> neither. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, I was tempted a little bit by Washington in this ballgame. I really was. Uh, the Redskins have notably played more inspired football in recent weeks. And we saw it again last week in Philly. Uh, I understand it was a really brutal beat if you had the Redskins plus the points in that ball game. But we saw Dwayne Haskins throwing the football effectively, which we haven't done, uh, which we haven't seen very often this year. Uh, and, you know, Washington's run game has been solid. Uh, of course, against the Giants, you know, since they got Leonard Williams from the Jets, they've held backs to, what, 3.1 yards per carry over the last five weeks. So I don't know if the Redskins are going to be able to run the football as well as they have in recent weeks. You can pass on the Giants. Is Haskins going to be able to do that on a game uh, where the running game isn't going to be capable of carrying it? And, and you know, it's a nice matchup for Saquon Barkley, who got going last week against Miami uh, and is likely – uh, to have success on the ground here against a Redskins squad that hasn't been great at stopping the run. But when you're talking about Daniel Jones back at QB for the Giants, coming off that huge win um, uh, uh, with for Eli last week at home, you know, Jones has been a turnover machine. You know, 21 turnovers uh, in his 10 starts, 33 sacks taken in those 10 starts. Um, I'm not convinced the Giants can match their emotional high from last week. And I've seen Washington do nothing but fight in recent weeks. So the lean here is towards the Redskins, but is it a game that I actually want to lay points? <laughs> no. Uh, worth noting, Washington, eight straight losses against divisional foes, just one and seven ATS in that ballgame. And of course, you know, the Redskins have lost their best players on the line. You know, Ryan Kerrigan out. Now uh, the Brandon Sheriff out. Those are impact injuries that haven't necessarily affected this number. So the lean is Washington, but when uh, at, at a closer look, I didn't get there uh, and didn't really come that close. Teddy, I didn't realize that. Eight straight losses, and it's not exactly the, the murderer's row there in the NFC East this year, man. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, the, the Redskins aren't a murderer's row kind of team. Yeah, no, good stat there, man. We've got 4-6-7, 4-6-8 up next, Pittsburgh at the New York Jets. Looks like Jets are catching three at home, seeing mostly Pittsburgh minus three, some juice on that three, 37 being the total here, Teddy. Yeah, I mean, there's... there's uh... A little bit of market love for Pittsburgh. You know, Clients and I cashed a ticket uh, betting against the Steelers uh, last week. And, you know, lucky with the Duck Hodges threw a pair of, you know, end zone interceptions in the fourth quarter. But that's what the Steelers are capable of doing offensively right now. You know, mm-hmm. Pittsburgh has scored in their last seven games. They scored more than one offensive touchdown once during that span. Uh, sorry, last six games. And they got two in that game. So they have seven offensive touchdowns and 71 drives over their last six games. That's the lowest rate in the league during that span. So, you know, you talk about, oh, well, the you know, down to a th- third or fourth string quarterback, whatever you want to call Hodges. You're down to a, you know, however far down in the running back depth chart they are. It's an offense that is struggling mightily. Of course, it's not like the Jets have been uh, a, a monster uh, this season by any stretch of the imagination. They've shown signs, um, but you're asking a Jets offense that's been, you know, fairly suspect, let's just put it that way, um, to move the football against the Steelers' defense that no one's moving the football against. I mean, you know, for as bad as Pittsburgh's offense has been, their defense has been capable of leading them and keeping them in the playoff chase. Now, Tomlin's got a bad track record as a, track record as a road favorite, but he has a very strong trend towards under in the road favorite role. In fact, 25 and 6 to the under since 2013 when the road chalk. So I wouldn't talk anyone out of an under in this game. Steelers have been an under machine, and I'm not convinced the Jets are primed to light up the scoreboard this week either. It's a low total, but it's a low total for a reason. Lean under in Jets and Steelers. 25 and 6 to the under when road chalk. Teddy, bring in the stats on the second half here of the NFL Every Game on the Board podcast. We got Cincinnati at Miami up next. Teddy, you can find ones on each side. Pick'ems at most shops. We're seeing 46 is the total. Cincinnati at Miami and Miami Gardens, Teddy. 
Yeah, and uh, you know, you talk about the stats. Obviously, you know, uh, the, the Monday pod, the Monday morning opening line report, which we love. Uh, that's not a time where I'm, you know, I don't have all my stats and all my angles and all that ready. Most of that is just about reactions to yesterday's game, uh, the games on Sundays, and then trying to predict where the line moves and the initial thoughts. We do a pod on Thursday or Friday. You know, we got some numbers. Yeah. We've got time uh, to put some of that together. So you'll, you'll get a little bit more uh, uh, of the trends and angles and that sort of thing with me uh, later in the week. Uh, as for Bengals, Dolphins, I mean, the, the, the wise guys are pounding Cincinnati. Um, and, <laughs> I mean, if you watch the Bengals play the Patriots last week, they're competitive in that game until Dalton's throwing picks. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of difference between those two teams. Mixon's running the football effectively. Uh, you know, since their bye week, Mixon's second in the league in touches, second in the league in yards from scrimmage. Uh, only McCaffrey has been better than him. Uh, and he's played some good run defenses. The Steelers, the Jets, the Patriots during that span, all of them, uh, you know, top 10 defenses uh, in terms of rushing yards. And the Dolphins are not a top 10 defense in rushing yards. <laughs> Let's put it mildly. 28th uh, in yards from scrimmage allowed, giving up 161 yards per game. Uh, in uh, that span, you know, Bar. We just talked a minute ago about Saquon Barkley and the lousy season he had. He got no. He went nuts against uh, Miami last week. Um, so it's the kind of scenario where a Bengals team has been playing better and should be able to run the football this week. You can understand why they're uh, in a, taking money. At the same time, since he's the only team in the NFL that scored two or fewer touchdowns in every game this season, and if you're looking for, like, hey, it's week 16, let's find something to do, I'm not exactly excited about going, yeah, let's find a bet to ask Cincinnati to win their second game of the year on the road in Miami. I'm not, you know, I'm not looking to back the Dolphins this week. Uh, I mean, the, the Miami continues to big shuffles on the offensive line, big shuffle, shuffles in the secondary. Uh, they just lost. Uh, Raquan McMillan, uh, one of the better inside linebackers uh, in the NFL. So I, I know I don't want Miami. Uh, I'm not going to take him this week. I'm not going to have him in week 17. But I, I'm not willing to ask the Bengals to win. This is a clear pass for me. Okay, Teddy. And we've had a lot of commenters ask about uh, totals on uh, on the NFL slate. Um, th- this is one. I, I'm down here in South Florida right now. It's supposed to be uh, pretty nasty weather all weekend long, affecting the Boca Bowl on Saturday. It's just coming to mind here with Cincinnati at Miami, obviously open-air stadium there in Hard Rock. Uh, if it's like 20 miles an hour wind, looks like showers on Sunday as well. Uh, any interest in, in betting an under 46 and a half here with Cincinnati and Miami? Well, if you're going to do it, do it now. You know, because we know, I mean, we know what the markets are going to do on this. They're going to knee-jerk to the, as soon as they see the wins, they'll knee-jerk to the under. Um, that's just the way that it works. And if you ask me, you know, which of these two teams is likely to be more negatively affected by windy conditions, I'm going to put Miami. You know, Miami's offense right now is <laughs> uh, Fitzpatrick winging it downfield and you're trying to put the ball in, window, you know, one-on-one coverage where receivers can make plays. Um, in windy conditions, that doesn't necessarily work particularly well. Uh, but again, if you want that under, it's a sooner rather than, rather than later type of thing. Uh, and with the totals, you know, they, uh, I, I understand when I have a, like on, on the Monday pod, I got an opinion. I'm confident where the total is going to move. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll offer an opinion. Uh, but if I don't know where the total is going to move and don't have a sense of where it's going to move, I'm not going to waste time and say, uh, you know, game after game. Going, I don't know. I don't know. Total right. wise. I don't know. Uh, you know, <laughs> when I, when I got something on the total, I'm happy to share it. And I'll, I'll make more of an effort to do that. Absolutely. I really appreciate, uh, all the comments, uh, from the pod, uh, that we've been getting. Uh, geez, our views are way up, man. We really, thank you guys very much. Uh, we appreciate it. Merry Christmas. Absolutely. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Whatever you're celebrating out there, hopefully you're enjoying it over the holidays. And uh, like Teddy said, yeah, enjoy the comments. Try to read them as much as possible. And uh, we, we, we'll take them into account when when possible. Follow them on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers. Uh, myself on Twitter at Drew Martin Betts. Feel free to uh, ask any questions on that platform as well. Teddy, next game up 4 7 one four seven two here. Carolina at Indianapolis. This one on the cusp here of a full touchdown. Indy at home, seeing six and a half with juice. That's the Colts laying at home. Some shops showing, showing seven plus money on the Colts. Forty six and a half being the total here, Teddy. So the quarterbacks making their NFL debuts, their starting debuts this year, have been monsters. ATS. There have been 11 previous QBs to do it this year. I think they're like 9-2 and two against the number in their first starts. They've been really good against the money. And here's Greer, uh, obviously the third-string guy for Carolina. It's a Panthers team that's been god-awful. 
uh, down the stretch. Greer had an okay preseason. I remember watching him and saying, this guy can chuck it. Mm-hmm. I remember that coming out of college. I'm like, this guy can chuck it. Uh, so I'm a Greer fan. And I, I, I know he threw some picks in August. Um, in general, I'm a believer that, uh, you know, and, and as the markets have shown this year, the markets overreact to the QB making his first start. Um, and they've been money makers this season. And the Colts are not a team I want to lay a touchdown with right now. I mean, what happened on Monday night was ugly. So now it's a short week. They're out of playoff contention. You know, uh, the, the the quotes from Riker, oh, we want to get to 8-8, eight and eight. we want to get to 8-8. Eight and eight. That's, you know, it's a nice motivator. It's not really a nice motivator. Uh, Indy's won once, what, in the last seven weeks? And it's not like they're winning by margin when they do win. You know, there's certainly the type of game where we would expect the Colts offense to be able to move the football. They couldn't do it against the Saints. You compare the Saints defense and the Panthers defense, there's no comparison. I mean, uh, Carolina has been awful defensively since losing. I mean, they lost an nose tackle on Terry Poe. Since then, they've allowed 6.3 yards per carry, uh, which is why I didn't end up pulling the trigger on the Panthers uh, in this game. Defensively, you know, they've been pretty rough right now. Uh, maybe an over here it makes some sense. It makes a little sense to this better. And again, we're not talking about a total that's through the roof, 46 and a half, given Carolina's defensive struggles, uh, given an advantageous matchup uh, for that Colts offense that is underachieved of late, and given the fact that I believe that Greer has a potential to throw the football effectively uh, in this game. And the lean here is definitely towards the over. Good stuff, Teddy. We got Baltimore at Cleveland up next. Looks like 50 being the total, nine in the hook. That's what the Ravens are laying on the road. Yeah. So... I mean, this is one of those games that's as uh, uh, easy a pass on the board as I'm going to find. All right, I don't want the Browns. All right, uh, what we saw last week from Cleveland felt like a stick in the fork in this team, and I'm not convinced that they're going to bounce back here. Uh, you know, it's been a long, ugly season. There's been an endless drama for Cleveland. There've been injury, uh, endless injuries for Cleveland, and there's you know, I mean, Baker Mayfield didn't work this year. The passing game didn't work this year. Freddie Kitchens didn't work this year. There's you know, the issues are. Uh, are only getting greater in Cleveland, and, and there's no escape from that. And, uh, you know, we talk about a team with a home field edge. Not much of one for the Browns right now. And then you have a Ravens team that's playing to, you know, clinch the number one seed. They're playing in revenge for an early season loss to the Browns. That's the one that stands out to me. They lost at home to Cleveland earlier this year. And Cleveland smacked them in that ballgame. Um, so one would think the Ravens, you know, are uh, going to have some uh, uh, attention. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, like Nick Chubb ran for what a buck sixty-five in that in that uh, first meeting, and you can't pass on Baltimore. But you absolutely can run uh, on the Ravens, and in theory, Cleveland could hand the ball off here and, and, and shorten the game and 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 maybe keep it tight. Uh, but that's a, you know, a maybe. <laughs> Baltimore is a team that I've known. You know, they are as public a team as it gets in the NFL right now. They're also the best team in the league, and they've shown that they're the best team in the league on multiple different occasions. I'm not looking to step in front of Baltimore. Uh, it's a huge public play. It's road chalk. It's all of this. You know, I'm not backing the Ravens this week. There's no, there's no, not a shred of value on the Baltimore side at this stage. But they're not a team I'm going to rush to stand in front of against an opponent who I don't trust to show up. Um, All right, Tony. Yeah, no, no I, I, I know what, exactly what you mean. I mean, it's an interesting concept in terms of Cleveland being able to shorten the game with uh, having some running success, and, and and that's always kind of a, a I guess a, a worry when when looking to lay doubles. You know, at most shops on the run, uh, on the road. There's also nine and a halves out there as well. We got NFC East matchup up next. This is a game we actually talked about in studio, so you can check it out on the uh, Wager Talk YouTube channel as well. But uh, I guess we can quick hit it again. Dallas, Philadelphia looks like the Cowboys one and a half or two favorites on the road. Forty six the total in Philly. Yeah, I mean, the Dak Prescott injury is real. You know, this isn't one of those. Oh, we're sort of wondering about uh, the team's mask. The guy's not practicing. He's not throwing. You know, he did light throwing today. Uh, whatever that means before practice. Um, that could be a problem, but. The Eagles' secondary is such a disaster right now. (laughs) 
You know, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, every time a ball goes in the air against Philadelphia, you're like, oh, great, it's a touchdown. You know, it doesn't matter. It, it can be a, you know, it could be a three yard slant. And you understand it. That's what happened last week against Washington, the first yeah. play. It's a, it's a three, it's supposed to be a three yard game. And but one broken tackle, boom, he's gone to the end. That's what's happening to Philly right now. Their cornerback play is abysmal. If Dallas brings their A game, they can name the score here. Philly can't compete. The Eagles, I mean, literally, they don't have receivers. They don't have cornerbacks. There are major issues with the Eagles personnel-wise right now. Um, Dallas has dominated the division. I mean, dominated it. 14-2 and two straight up uh, since the start of 2017. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, all that said, <laughs> you know, from a character standpoint, we saw in each of the last two weeks, Philly has been punched and punched hard, and they punched back. And they punched back hard, and they found ways to win the game. And I know it was a BS cover last week, but they won the game before they covered, and they won the game because they dug deep, and they did the exact same thing against the Giants the previous week, where, you know, a refuse to lose, a will to win, a Carson Wentz taking the team on his back, call it what you will. Philly's shown character. Dallas hasn't. Dallas has not responded well to adversity. So from a personnel standpoint, you can understand why the Cowboys are favorite. If Dallas brings their A game, they can dominate this contest. Just like the first meeting was a non, it was non-competitive, thirty-seven to ten. Uh, but <laughs> you know, do you trust Dallas in a character game more than Philly? And I don't. So uh, you know, my lean's been towards the Eagles, uh, and I'm not going to get to the window with it. Not, not, I need a plus three with Philly, and I'm not going to get one. Uh, but I, I certainly lean in their direction. All right, Teddy hitting seventy-one percent. December NFL and of course 56% over the last five years in the NFL so both good short-term and long-term Teddy covers in the NFL really knows this stuff and you can get a seven-day all-access package special coupon code here for the podcast TC69 at checkout will take $50 off that package at sportsmemo.com that's a seven-day all-access package for only $69 using the coupon code TC69 at checkout. We got Arizona at Seattle up next, Teddy. 51 being the total with the Seahawks laying nine in the hook or 10 at home. So let's talk about Seattle. Um, Javion Clowney, do you think he matters, Drew? Absolutely. Ziggy Ansett, does he matter? Yes. Michael Kendricks, does he matter? Yes. Bobby Wagner, what about him? Absolutely, yes. Jack Griffin, does he matter? He's a UCF Knight. They all matter, Teddy. Yes. Uh, Quandry Diggs, the latest guy, does he matter? Yeah, this is starting to this is starting to really snowball here, Teddy. Yes. So those are the six Seahawks defensive starters who were not on the field in the fourth quarter last week against Carolina, when the Panthers rallied from thirty to ten in order to cover the spread for some. Uh, and scoring, you know, moving the ball up and down the field against that Seahawks defense, the second half of that ball game. None of those guys were able to practice on Thursday, yesterday. Okay, that's six starters on defense for Seattle. There's a seventh guy hurt too. I'm trying to remember who it was. Someone, another guy that was like, oh wow, uh, the linebacker, um, Dwayne Brown, starting tackle. He's out. You know, Penny's he out. Yeah, they all matter. And the line's just sitting there at 10. <laughs> you know, there's a couple of nine and a half popping up. Um, Arizona, that from a stat standpoint, how's this stand? Uh, stand and this is with a healthy defense. Seattle, number 27, yards per carry allowed. Arizona, number three in yards per carry gain. Wow. I mean, what, why isn't this line moving then more, Teddy? Must win for the Seahawks. You know that. Oh, boy. The, the whole must wins. And look, uh, I mean, Arizona, in theory, well, there's, I mean, why hasn't the line moved? One, Seattle's really good. Okay, even with these guys, Seattle's really good. Two, Arizona's pass defense is real dicey. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, and in theory, Russell Wilson will chuck the football all over the field uh, in this ball game. You know, I cashed a ticket betting Arizona over uh, the total last week. Uh, that was a you know five percent or big ticket uh, winner last Sunday. Um, I wouldn't talk anyone out of playing the over in this game either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you like the over more so than the uh, ten point underdog? No. Okay. 
Fair enough, Teddy. <laughs> Honesty. It's what we like on this podcast. I like, the, I like the underdog more than the over. Yes. <laughs> Every game on the board podcast. Minty bets up first. Teddy covers finishing it off here. We got the Sunday nighter and Monday nighter to cap it off, Teddy. Kansas City at Chicago. 44 and a half the total. Looks like KC laying six in Soldier Field. All right, uh, now, I want you to talk to me about the Chiefs defense. All right. What's the Chiefs defense? Is it, It's a bottom feeder defense, right? Yes, yes, I would say bottom 10-ish. Okay. In their last four games, opponents have scored four touchdowns on 40 drives. That's the best defense in the NFL during that span. Not number 15, not number 25, number one in fewest touchdowns per drive allowed. They haven't given up more than two touchdown passes in any game since week nine. They've only given up 6.3 yards per pass attempt over the last six games. I know they're going against Mitch Trubisky this week. All right. Chiefs defense is playing Super Bowl caliber defense right now, and nobody's noticing, and everyone's looking at Kansas City as being, oh, it's Patrick Mahomes in the offense. The pass rush is there every game right now, and that defense is predicated on getting the pressure on opposing quarterbacks, and Kansas City is doing that effectively. Week in, week out. Bears bubble burst off of last week, you know, uh, or the, 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 uh, the dream crusher, you know, uh, lost against Green Bay. Um, it's a Sunday night game. The Chiefs are the clear public side. All the money's already shown for Kansas City. The books will be desperate for a Bears cover in this ballgame. Um, there's lots of reasons you can talk yourself out of Kansas City, but I can't find a whole lot of reasons to talk yourself on to Chicago. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, lean Chiefs. Uh, I haven't got to the window with them, and I already missed the best of the number, which means I'm not likely to get there with Kansas City. And, Teddy, I mean, bringing the stats again, that was Kansas City defense, four touchdowns given up in the last 40 drives? Correct, the last four weeks. Wow, man. That's uh, that's good stuff. Number one in all of NFL. So I was way off on saying bottom 10-ish defense there, Teddy. That's just the last four. I mean, again, you look at the, the season-long stats in December are going to tell you one lie after the next, after the next, after the next. Mm-hmm. And if you're trying to look at season-long stats and handicap off of that in December, you will lose. Because you're not betting reality. You're betting stuff that happened in September and October. Um, right now. And again, who they play? They play the Chargers, uh, the uh, Raiders, the Patriots, and the Broncos. It's not bad. I mean, Denver's not got a great offense. New England doesn't have a great offense. The Chargers don't have a great offense. Raiders don't have a great offense. But are they all bottom feeders? No. No. <laughs> uh, for what it's worth. Yeah, good stuff there, Teddy. And uh, that finishes off the Sunday card. We got the Monday nighter that we can quick hit. We'll also be able to talk about it on the NFL opening line report posted on Monday. We will have two podcasts early next week, uh, it being Christmas next week. We'll have uh, the NFL opening line report and then a little scheduling here. We'll have the part two of the college football bowl podcast. Those will both be posted on Monday. We'll take Tuesday and Wednesday off for the Christmas holiday. But um, we do have the Monday Nighter to hit. And, guys, a reminder on the the coupon code for this podcast, TC69 at checkout. will take $50 off Teddy Cover's seven-day all-access package. He's hitting over 70% in the NFL in December. Also, 56%, my favorite stat here, over the last five years in the NFL. That's 202 in 156, 56% NFL since 2015. And also check out his college football, 31 and 21, 60% college football bowl games the last four years. He's got a free play up on the bowl games for Saturday's action. Also a bunch of plays up at sportsmemo.com. So check it out there. We got the Monday Nighter. Green Bay at Minnesota Vikings lane five and a half at home. Teddy 47 being the total on Monday night. So this is your trend nightmare. Okay. Okay. Uh, under Zimmer, the Vikings are the best team in the league uh, against the spread at home. Um, I got them at 32, 15 and one 68% just blindly betting the Vikings at home under Zimmer um, as a home favorite 67% under Zimmer. That's best uh, in the NFL during that span. They've covered four times in five tries against Green Bay uh, at home. I don't bet against the Vikings at home lightly. But, (laughs) A, Dalvin Cook doesn't look like he's going to play. 
and B, you know, the the strong trend for Minnesota at home may be mitigated by the fact we got a Kirk Cousins trend. Kirk Cousins on Monday Night Football, he's 0-8. Wow. Uh, you know, he's not the big game guy. Um, it's worth noting. And yet, the, you know, so Cook's hurt. Cousins has a terrible track record in the step-up games, and the money's coming from Minnesota. Um, again, that long-term track record at home is real. Green Bay clinches the division with a win. Um, and the Packers... The Packers haven't been sexy at all. All right. What they've been is efficient. Um, I haven't seen Rodgers play four good quarters. All, you know, one of those games where he's chucking it around all year. I haven't seen him do that. But their defense has been there. The running game has been there. And as this number goes up, five and a half, it just feels high to me. Um, especially for a team that can clinch with a win. Even with Minnesota's impressive track record playing at home in the Mike Zimmer era. Uh, but we'll think about this. When I put anything out on this yet, I may not uh, play anything on Monday. Um, but the first lean is that this is a little bit too many points. All right, Teddy. Man, bringing this at Cousins 0-8 on Monday Night Football. That was this this latest stat? Yes, sir. Or is that primetime games? Because I'm kind of surprised that Cousins has actually played in eight Monday Nighters. Yeah, I mean, he, was, uh, I mean, he was with the Redskins for a while. Yeah, that's true. You know? Okay. That's the number I have in front of me. All right. Um, I, I, it's cut and pasted from a uh, source that is generally very reliable. Which is uh, information is very key in this in this business, Teddy. And uh, he's got the information there. So check out his packages at sportsmemo.com. 56% in the NFL last five years. 70% NFL in the month of December. Coupon code TC69 at checkout gives you a seven-day all access package for fifty dollars off, less than ten bucks a day. Seven day all access sportsmemo.com with Teddy covers. TC69 is the coupon code. Teddy, want to throw anything out there before we shut this down? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I threw out a bunch, like a handful of angles today, you know, and and uh, I'm never making a bet based solely on an angle. I'm never getting off a bet based solely on an angle. When you're building a case, you can use the angles as part of your case. But you need to build a case as something that's not just, oh, well, so, you know, the Vikings have a great track record as Zimmer at home. Therefore, I'm going to bet the Vikings or the Vikings never win with Cousins on Monday Night Football. Cousins can't win the big games. Therefore, I'm not betting, uh, betting against the Vikings. In, in my mind, the, 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 the stats and the trends and the angles help you piece together a case for a team. They're not the I don't look at them in a vacuum and saying this is the angle. And that's the only thing that matters about this ball game because it's not. Uh, all that being said, hey, guys, kick some ass this weekend. Go make some money. Uh, everyone needs a little extra Christmas bonus. Uh, so best of luck uh, in all the games. And then we'll do it. Uh, we'll do the opening line report on Monday. I do have opening uh, look headlines for week 17. So we can talk about how the uh, markets have adjusted uh, uh, for the uh, uh, week 17 numbers. You see dramatic line moves in week 17. So be ready on Monday. <laughs> yeah, it will be an important one. NFL opening line report. Uh, it's uh, my favorite show of the week. So uh, come back and join us on Monday. We do. And Westgate was the one that posted them, Teddy? Because you were yes. sure about it. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And we'll, and we'll keep doing opening line reports all through the playoffs uh, as well. You know, it's not something that, that ends when the regular season ends, uh, unless Drew's run out of gas with it. But, uh, you know, it, it's a pod that I like. And it's a pod that it's clearly caught on. So uh, not that the every game on the board pod isn't catching, but uh, – <laughs> The uh, the opening line report is for whatever reason you know it's got it's got a good following now so uh, we really appreciate all of, all of you uh, watching and listening and uh, and being a part of the show. Um, cheers. And Thank Teddy, you. I haven't Great. run out of gas, man. As long as you'll go. It, it, it will keep going because we know that people like it. But thank you, Teddy. Best of luck with your bets this weekend and uh, enjoy your weekend, guys. Uh, we will be back on Monday. NFL opening line report. So best of luck with your bets.